Nafe, where and when were you born? Born at, at uh, Prince Street, Bridgewater in 1937. And what, were you born at home? I was born at home, delivered on a, as my mother told me, a, a snowy <laughs> afternoon by Dr. Hugh Frazier. And and uh, you, so you were and you were born in February. So obviously we had as much snow that year as well, we, we had this lot, year. We had a lot <laughs> of snow. In those days, we seemed to have a lot of oh, snow. a lot more snow than this. Where do you fit into your family? I'm the I'm, I'm the uh, last surviving child. Okay, and you had how many s brothers and sisters? There were eight children. Okay. And the first child was born in Marseille, France. Okay. And the last child was born in the Dawson Memorial Hospital in 1946. And both of, both of them died. Okay. They didn't survive uh, early childhood. I see. Okay. The balance of the children were born in houses my brother Yusuf in Liverpool, and the rest of the family in Bridgewater. Okay, so your parents lived in Bridgewater in Liverpool before they came to Bridgewater. Yes. Where else? Or wait a minute. When did your parents come to Canada? My my father came to Canada in 1912. Okay. And lived in Liverpool with his brother, his older brother. Did they come together, or had the brother come before them? No, the brother had come in 1904. Okay. And my father stayed here until 1922, and then went back and got married. Okay. And then was bringing his wife yep. back to Canada. Yes. And uh, she had an infectious eye disease, disease called Terracoma. Okay. And they stopped her from getting on the boat in, in uh, France. I see. So she was pregnant and she had, and, he, and my father had to come to Canada anyway. Okay. So he left her there in the hospital in France and she had her baby there. And then in the spring, would have been in around, I think March, or April, she she came to Canada. I see, I see. And uh, uh, so I w I put down what led them to um, to Bridgewater, but they came first to Liverpool, then. Yes. Okay. And what was your father doing in Bridge in Liverpool? He was peddling on the. Uh, they had the brother and two other people had a store in Liverpool and had people going out peddling from okay, the store. From the store. What was the store's name? Well, it, 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 that I don't remember, but I, it, it probably it probably was either Rofi, Rafi, or, or Thomas. There were Christian Arabs in Liverpool oh, okay. by the name of Thomas. Okay. And there were two of the brothers and a sister that were in in the business with my my uncle. I see. In I see. Liverpool. In Liverpool. Was was next to the to the um, post office in Liverpool. Okay, right on. So it would be the right main, there on the main street. Right. So it would be next door. Maybe between the Wickwire House and the post office, maybe because I can't post remember. Post office was on the corner. Yeah. And then it was just a, a bit further down towards maybe maybe going uh, towards the fort yes well the wickwire house was on the corner of the next street the it's a right across from the mersey hotel so it could it could have been right there you know yeah, it was before that i think okay yeah before the before the the wickwire, uh, wickwire house, house. Right. yeah between the post office and the wickwire house right yeah so what led them to come to Brid over to bridgewater well, my another another uncle, I think, uh, was in Truro. Okay. Uh, 
not an uncle, a first cousin, mm -hmm. and and uh, he wanted to open a store in Bridgewater, and and he had some money or had the wherewithal to open the store, mm -hmm. and uh, my mother's brother was was in Cuba, and my my father brought my mother's brother to Bridgewater to Liverpool. Okay. And and they stayed there for about four to six months and then came to Bridgewater and opened the store with the with the other first cousin. Okay. And what was that store? That that is uh, the genesis of the of the Rafi or Rofi store okay. as it is today. Okay. Okay. That was in 1926. Okay, so that's the beginning of the Rofi store in right. in Bridgewater. So, um, so I put down then I then I then I say, what did your father do? Well, he ran the store, or was he? Well, when no, he again uh, went on. He peddled on the road. Okay. From that store. From the store. From yeah. the Rofi store. Yeah. I see. And how far would they peddle? He would go as far as uh, Port Matoon. Okay. And and he'd go to Blue Rocks, and uh, and and pretty well from Blue Rocks along the shore yeah. to Port Matoon. Yeah. Okay. Not too far inland. Yeah. So he would use the La Haye Ferry at some time along the line, maybe. Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe he came back to Bridgewater before going over yeah. to. Um, the what transportation did he use? He had a Clydesdale horse. Okay. Big, massive horse. Yeah. Had four. Had three. Uh, white feet and one black. Foot. And one black foot. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Because I always think of them as having white feet, big furry or mm -hmm. big hairy white feet. The Clydesdales. So did he stable the horse right behind your house, or? He built a barn there, yes. Okay. What did Prince Street look like then? How how uh, populated was Prince Street? It it was uh, almost, I would say, fairly well the same as it is today. There there are perhaps another five houses on Prince Street that weren't there. Okay. In the thirties. But the but the the architecture of some of those houses, those are some of those houses along that street are quite old, aren't they? Yes, the the house next to our house on the north side would have been circa 1900, and ours was circa 1915, 1920. Okay. And uh, do you know who built your house? Yes, Jeff. Jeff Publicover had a store in, in Dublin Shore. Okay. And he built the house. I see. Why in the world did he build a house in Bridgewater if he had a store in Dublin Shore, do you think? Do you want to know? Yeah. Well, he built it for his fancy woman. I think I'd see. I <laughs> and he would, they, he would then shut his store down in, in uh, Dublin Shore on Saturday night and drive to Bridgewater and uh, stay the night and then drive back to Dublin Shore, as I was told, so he could attend church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard that story before. That's <laughs> okay, what's your earliest recollections of Bridgewater? What do you remember as a child? I remember the, you know, the river, the Katie gas, uh, the uh, the dump, or the dump dump pond we called it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, did you go up Jubilee Road to get to the dump pond? No, we we went. There was a path back through the woods, quite a good path from Prince Street. Well, it, yeah. it, it, it one one lot over from our house was uh, was the old schoolhouse. 
Oh, okay. And, and, and the path went up through the old schoolhouse and then went back. It wasn't very far, but we used to think it was a long way. Yes, yeah. And, and, uh, was so when you, when you went that path, where would you come out? The top of the, the top of the hill. Um, At Alexander Avenue. Yeah, there, yeah there, and then there was a ravine there, and that's where the dump was. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that's, and so you came, but, but see what, if I came into the dump, I came to the corner, to the gate, and I think it was a gate, wasn't it? There was a gate across yeah, at was, Alexander Avenue. Yes. So were you inside the gate, or were you, did you have to come through the gate afterwards? No, no, the gate, the gate was on the north side. All right. On the south side, it was like woods. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then the ravine. Yeah. And then you got to the ravine. Um, Can you tell me any experiences that you want to, you know, as a child of? Well, what about the what about the um, the Acadia gas engines? What can you tell me about being around the Acadia gas engines? Oh, I used to spend every Saturday down there. Is that right? And uh, did they work on Saturdays? Oh yes. Yeah. Tell half, me about it. Half days. Well, it did. There were over 100 people working there, and and they they were mainly living in the south end of Bridgewater, you know, like in, yes. in the area around, around and and, and uh, it it was a uh, it was a massive concern going uh, in the 30s and 40s, and during the war it was it was uh, very well attended by people. I think perhaps then they had. Maybe two hundred people working. Did they have any? Do you remember any women working there, Nave? Just in the office. Just in the office. Yes. Nobody working on the floor or whatever they called it in, no. the, in the shop. No. Do you remember any names of any any women that worked in the in the office? Uh, there was a uh, Swickers, I think, from Newcombville that that worked in the office. Okay. Because with that's something we've been looking for is. Who worked? You know whether there were any women working in the Acadia gas engines, and whether because of the war, where women went to work because there weren't as many men to work, whether there were men, whether there were women working in the, in the mechanical part of it, but there weren't. No, there definitely not. I see. No. Did ships come in to pick up engines right there at, at the wharf and on that on that side of the river? No. Okay, so they they would have to be taken over, if they were shipped away, they were taken off. Maybe the, did they go by train or did they go by I think 90% of them would have gone by train. I see. And a lot of it went to Newfoundland. Oh, is that right? Yeah, the, the, the business in the end was was uh, was mainly to Newfoundland. They'd create, the, they'd create a, a, an engine up and and everything would be in the crate. Okay. To, to install it in a, in a boat, say, in Newfoundland. I see. So the the engine would be there, and the propeller, and the shaft, and the gas tank. All that went in the crate, so that it was a complete item. Okay. When you open the crate up, everything was there. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Very interesting. Um, and they just let you sort of wander around. And <laughs> did you know any particular men that you were fond of that were oh, on yes. the floor? Oh yes, yes. Uh, and and they'd hide you when when Mr. Ritzy would come around, they they would hide you so that Mr. Ritzy wouldn't find you in the place. Oh, is that right? But it was fascinating for kids to yeah to 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 get in the place and to see the whole thing working. Sure. And and, and to see neighbors, you know, doing the the the, the work. The work. Get, yes. Yeah. Because yeah. you actually were were watching people that you knew. Yes. Doing something. Yeah. Yeah. So who were some of your neighbors? There was Dawson Cantaloupe and Caleb Yoey and, and uh, Frank Hebb and Ellis Hebb and Monroe, well, what, forget what his first name was. 
and Mr. Mr. Hurdle, I forget now what his first name was. He was kind of like a big boss. I see. And yeah. Mr. Mr. David O'Neill, who lived on on uh, Prince Street, he was uh, in charge of the office. Okay. And and uh, Mr. Nogler, uh, that's uh, Lloyd Nogler's father. And, okay. And. Uh, Gushy Nogler's father. Gushy Nogler's father. Yes. Yeah. Who lived on St. Andrew Street. Yes. They used okay. to work. They, they walked back and forth for, for dinner. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, that's great. Now tell me about going to school. Going to school was, was a, a mile and a quarter walk in the morning. And then a mile and a quarter at dinner hour, and then a mile and a quarter back at dinner hour, and a mile and a quarter back. So it was a, a long trudge. Did we, did, did, do you think we had an hour and a half for lunch? Yes. I thought so, because we couldn't have gotten back and forth. Some kids couldn't have gotten back and forth in the hour. Yeah. We, we went back to school at 1.30. At 1.30, but you had to be there at 1.15. Okay. You know, they they uh, you had to be lined up and outside to go in at one thirty. Okay, what do you remember about the schoolyard? The schoolyard was was uh, very constricted. It, 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 the uh, the uh, old high school took up much of the of the land area, mm -hmm. and there were. A number, one or two, there were four houses where the, where the high school is now. And there were a lot of pine trees. It, yes, a, a great deal of pine trees. Yeah. I remember the pine trees, you know, that they were so big. Yeah. And, yeah. and when you look at that area now, there's so few trees left, really. Mm -hmm. um, what interested you in school? I mean, what, what, what were you interested in school? History and and uh, chemistry. Okay, what teachers do you remember? Oh, uh, in high school. Either one, anywhere. What teacher? What teachers stand out in your head? Doug Tozer, mm -hmm. who was in, in grade eight, uh, math, um, science teacher, and. Uh, and Boyd Bartol and Francis Mauser mm -hmm. and uh, did Mr. Mauser become prince? Was he principal before Boyd Bartol, or was he ever principal? He was principal before before Boyd Bartol. Yeah. And uh, do you remember A. G. G. Hurdle at all? Oh yes, he was the principal. In the old high school, in the elementary when it was, but as the elementary school. So you remember you you remember the changeover. Yeah, to the, I, to I, the new school. Well, it, to the new school three times. Yeah, <laughs> I I went to three different high schools. Did you really? Went to the old high school. As a high school. Went to the F R Davis High School. Yes. And then went to this high school. Well, I don't know if I went to this high school, but uh, but the F. R. Davis was torn down, and then this one was built. And and uh, I think this is the one that that is still there. I, okay. It was enlarged upon, I think. The F. R. Davis. Okay. The okay. The F. R. Davis was not really didn't last very long before it was renovated torn again. Or no, torn, no. It was torn down. It was torn down. It was full of asbestos. Oh, that's right. And it was wood. So when they tore it down and they tore the annex, the, the elementary school annex, yeah. they tore that down and they tore down the high school, the old high school. Yeah. The, 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 um, well, the old high school became the elementary, or the the elementary school was built where the old high school was, where the where the 
old. Yes, but the old high school became the elementary school. Yes. For a while, mm -hmm. and then they tore it down, and it became the new elementary school. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I had forgotten about the fact that the F. R. Davis was torn down to re be replaced by a cement or a brick building a rather brick, than oh yes, yeah. rather, because it was that wooden building in 1952 or something that wooden building was built somewhere around that time 49 49 was it the first i know my father was chairman of the school board at the time well, the, the class of the class of 54 my class started in the old high school mm -hmm. and graduated from the new high school. Oh, is that right? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so when you were going to school, besides the subject, did you play any sports or anything? What did no. you do? Okay. What were your hobbies? Scouts and, and sea cadets. Oh, both scouts and sea cadets. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Where did the sea cadets meet? It was called the, the, the drill shed, the armories. Where was that? That was on Dufferin next to the, uh, the, the Fena station. Which has become... Or the, or, well, well, the White Rose station, it was a... Or was that Superline? It was not Fena, it was Superline. Well, well, I, I, know, mean, I, I mean, it became Fena. It became Fena. And I've heard what it was before. And it Superline. Quite, you superline, that's yeah. right. Superline changed to FINA, yeah. the finest in North America. Yeah. And then yep. became Baines somewhere along the line. So the drill hall, tell me a little bit about the drill hall. Well, the drill hall was built uh, during, the, I think, during or before the First World War. And it was for the West Nova Scotia Regiment to work. Uh, it was, it was their officers, or so to speak, and uh, and and the uh, the Anglican. I don't. I think he was a bishop. Uh, Bullock, I think. Yes, Bullock. He was. He was the colonel of the West Nova Scotia Regiment, and they. He, when the West Nova Regiment went to went to war in nineteen forty. Forty-two or four, thirty-nine, I guess it was. The, the Anglican Church didn't want the, him to be the colonel of, of the a, West of a, of a fighting oh, unit. Okay. So they 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 uh, produced another another colonel who who took the West Novies to uh, to, to uh, Britain. Mm -hmm. And and so the the what was the sea cadet name? What was the name of the sea cadet? Niobe. Or, Niobe. Okay. How many kids were in the corps? Do you think? Oh, a couple hundred. Really? It was a big, big. And we had a bugle band, and and uh, we we went to Stadacona when Princess Elizabeth came. In 1949, we were we went in and paraded. Yeah. That day, okay. we went in by bus, and paraded when when the, the prince and the princess came. Yeah. Was that 49 or 51? I think it's 51. Might have been 51. Yeah. I was a brownie or a guy. I was a guide, and I was I was also in there at that time. I think. Then you it's got wet. 51. Yes, got very wet. We stayed there from seven o'clock in the morning. They came around at 11 or 12. And it rained steadily from. How did you get in? Did you go by train or did you? No, we go went by, by bus? bus. Took a bus. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so would that be a Mackenzie bus line that we would take? Yes. Then? Yeah. Okay. They they hired they hired a Mackenzie bus. They must have had two two or three buses. Now who who led the the bugle band? Do you have any idea? Do you yes. Yes, of course I do. Len Bowen Smith, and he worked at the Acadia Gas, and he lived on Prince Street, and he was he was the bandmaster, and and Gushy Nogler 
was the yeah was the com sorry. He, he was a lieutenant in the in in the Niobe establishment, but I don't think he was the commanding officer. Okay. I forget now who the commanding officer was. Okay. But I know Len Bowen Smith was the command was the, was the bandmaster. The bandmaster. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you people, would, the the band would also have paraded in the exhibition parades at that time too, yes. probably. Yes. The bands that were in the parade at that time were probably all local bands. Yeah. Well, local from it the Mersey been, Band in Liverpool. The Mersey Band in Liverpool, the Bridgewater Band, the Luna, Lunenburg Band, and and uh, the Sea Cadet Band. And the Sea Cadet Band. Okay. And maybe a Sea Cadet Band in Lunenburg too. Okay. <coughs> so drums and bugles. That would be what. What it would be. <coughs> drums and bugles. Yes. Yeah. Um, what about scouts? Tell me about scouts. The scouts were. Were you a cub first? I think so. Okay. The the the, the scouts were 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 under the auspices of the uh, of the uh, United Church. Okay. And it was called the Third Bridgewater. Scout troop. Scout troop. Yeah. Okay. And and years later, uh, I started a new scout troop at the Baptist Church. I had been the scout, the cub master at the Baptist Church, and I started a new scout troop, and we called that the First Bridgewater. Oh, is that right? Yes. Because they had the the first and the second had sort of dropped, you know, been dropped, and the third. That's strange, isn't it? That they the way they, the 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 the, uh, the United Church looked after the the administration of the of the scout troop, and and it was the only scout troop in Bridgewater. When you were a member. Yes, the third Bridgewater. The third Bridgewater. And the scoutmaster was was one of the, the 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 best teachers that we had Ralph Faulkner who was a captain in the army and I and I failed to tell you that that he was my favorite teacher he was a lot of people's favorite yes, teacher yes, he was his a, teaching of grade 10 history was yes, something else yeah. I never I didn't get to, to be taught by him but but I remember hearing people talk about what a great teacher Ralph Faulkner was. And, and uh, Doug Tozer was a real yes. good teacher. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, so if the United Church sort of ran the, or you know, or were the administrators or the, of, the, of the scouts, where did you meet? We met at, at a barn that they built overlooking the, the duck pond or the dump pond. Call it the dump pond. It was the dump pond. Yes, it was the dump pond. <laughs> Do you have you any idea when the scout cabin was built, Naif? Oh, it it had been built in in the twenties or thirties. Okay, the guide cabin was built in nineteen thirty five, and the and the scouts I think already had a cabin yes, yes. at that time, yeah. but there were renovations made to it, were there not? Wasn't it, wasn't there? A deck put on it. Do you remember a deck being put on, or do you no. remember it having a deck? No, Maybe there I was, dreamt that there wasn't a deck. Okay, there was. A, it was built close to the hill, overlooking the the, the pond, mm -hmm. and on the on the north side, towards where <coughs> Mr. Bickle's house was, there was kind of like a little field there, mm -hmm. and that's where we used to parade there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and and. Uh, in the winter, there would be a duty patrol who would have to go around around six o'clock, five thirty, six o'clock, and start a fire in a in a stove, an old barrel stove that yeah, was in it. That was in it. And and uh, by seven o'clock, when the when the the meeting would start, the, the place would be warm then. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it was heated by a. Wood stove. Wood stove. Now, was the cabin there until Evergreen Road was built? I mean, it was, you know, was... Even even after, it was, it was more the extension of Park Street. Okay. Was when the cabin was torn down. I see. And was that 
was that when the park was formed? When Park Street was, you know, when it, because when did the when did the dump go? <laughs> Do you remember? The dump the dump went uh, when when uh, Mr. Cross was was the uh, was the mayor. George Cross was mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Judge. I forget. I forget who left the land. Oh the yes, park. the Owens left the land. Judge Owens or or Judge. or Mr. Owens. The Owens had left the land. And and uh, the town saw fit to to uh, make a dump out of it because they never did anything else with it. That's right. It was only years and years and years later in the fifties that that. Uh, that Mr. Kroos uh, moved the dump to the north end of town, and they developed that land then. Okay, and, and so that's when it started. Was in the in the fifties. Yes. I just I just couldn't put into and the scout cabin. Then just did it did it fall down? Do you think, or did it just did it get it 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 stopped being used, and and as far as the as far as the Cubs were concerned. Each church looked after their cubs. The Anglicans had a cub troop, and the Baptists had a cub troop, and the United Church had a cub troop. Yeah. But they still had the one scout troop. Okay, so they fed all the all the cubs went to the same scout uh, until nine until the probably oh sixty six or or so. 1966. I think that's when I started at the uh, the uh, Baptist scout troop because I was the Baptist cub leader. Okay. And there were just too many boys then, so we needed another scout troop. I see. I see. Yeah. And who was the commissioner around at that time? Was George Lake involved at that time? No. Okay. He came later. He would have come later, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, so you told me about getting your King Scout. Tell me about that. Becoming a King Scout. Yes, that was in the Third Bridgewater troop, and uh, that would have been in uh, 1950 or 51. Nine, that I got the King Scout. It. it uh, yeah. Were you in? Was it in Halifax? Was it a no, no, government it, house? It was, they come, where did they, they go? Where did they come to? Or? They, they, they had a uh, an investiture for for the whole province, and they brought uh, uh, the the governor general Alexander of Tunis, Earl Alexander, came to Halifax to the the red room, and and we paraded in there, and we got our our, our certificate. Okay. Which I have yet. Okay. Now, Lord Alexander of Tunis was the last British Governor General. More than likely. Yeah, because because uh, um, Vincent Massey was the first Canadian. And he followed. And him. he followed Lord Alexander. Yes, yeah. Um. Okay, I just want. I want to stop this for a second. I just had an awful feeling about whether this is recording or not. It is. <laughs> it is recording, so we're okay. Um, okay. I hope we're working now. Um, okay, now, you graduated from school in 1954, graduated from Bridgewater. Where did you go to, where did you go following high school? What did you do following high school? 
I went to military college, or started to go to military college in Ontario. Okay. And and uh, because of uh, a hockey accident, uh, I, my eye was my my right eye was bad, so I couldn't go in the uh, Air Force. Okay, so you didn't tell me that you played sports. You you. Well, that that was. Uh, <laughs> Street hockey in front of the house. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so you didn't go into military college. No. And so what did you do? So I worked that year and, and I came home. Or I worked in Ontario for a while and then came home and worked. And then went to Dalhousie the next year. I see. And then worked and then went to Mount, Mount Allison in, All right. in Sackville. Okay. And then in the following year, not the following year, the year after, I think, two years, I worked and then I went to uh, the vocational school college at uh, Lawrencetown and became a, a Nova Scotia land surveyor. All right, okay. And, um, and then where did you... Where did you work after that? Once you were a land surveyor, once you had that, I went. I worked for six months uh, with the Department of Transportation in Petite Revere, and we built a highway from Petite Revere to Broadcove. Okay. And then from there, I left there and went to work for Iron Ore Company of Canada in Seven Islands. Quebec and Labrador. Okay. And I stayed there for five years. I see. Okay. And Were there any other Bridgewater people up there at that time? Not Bridgewater people, but there were people from Nova no, Scotia. Nova Scotia? There. Okay. Yeah. So that was one of the places that people went to, went away to. Like they go to Alberta now, they went to Seven Islands. At that yes, time. they were building an iron mine there and, okay. a, and a railroad. Okay. Yeah. I see. Um, okay, when you were, can you, when was, when were you, when was the, the fire in Hebville? Was that while you were working for DOT or, or what? No, that was before. That was, uh, I was working for Noss Brothers in Bridgewater. Okay. And the fire was in 56, 1956. Okay. And it started... It started in Lapland. Okay. As a forest fire? As a forest fire. All right. And it it uh, it came across Menamke Lake and in that area down and, and into into Hebville. I see. It burnt all that area there. Okay, what would be some of that would be where the one oh three is now. Right. Okay. And were there high winds? Was it you know what what time of year was it? It was in August and it was extremely dry. Okay. And and uh, they they are not certain to this day if if it was set, but there was another massive fire up around Hunts Point, and there was another one in Shelburne, and they they felt they always felt that these fires were arson. Ooh, is that right? Yes that someone kind of stared at in Shelburne and lit a fire and then came near Liverpool and lit another fire and then came near... near um, Lapland. And Lapland. Goodness sakes. And it... It, it, uh, it, it only took about a day for it to come from Lapland to Bridgewater. Is that right? So that when they, when they said this fire was coming... Um, from Lapland, and and it was coming so fast that uh, by by nightfall of the first of the first night, the fire was behind the duck the dump pond. Is that right? It, that's how fast it had come, and it had already burnt Mr. Will Edwell's farm on the top of the hill, where the Westmount subdivision is. Yes. Yes. Wow. And and uh, it was burning burning behind the dump pond, right down to the dump pond, and over as far as, as the Pine Street, 
It never got on the south side of Pine Street, but it burnt between Jubilee Road or even Dufferin Street and Pine Street. It burnt all that area. Is in there. that right? Yes. Did it burn the golf course? No, it missed it. it missed the golf course. Yes. It Maybe missed. because it was some open it was, open land or it, Yeah, well it, because that was I don't know why. It, it it jumped over and it caught Mr. Will Ed Wiles farm. Well there was then, a reservoir up there. And so then it, it jumped from there down where the hospital or behind the hospital. Then burnt right down to so so where hillside pines that was all burning. Okay, my goodness. Yeah, and there weren't any stu that Empire or Exhibition Drive, of course, wasn't there. That no. was that was all no. it was all forest right all there forest, behind the yeah. behind the uh, because how many streets would be behind the baseball field? The baseball field was there then, was it? Well, it was just Crescent Street and Walnut Street okay. would be the only With ones. Only ones that were there. Yeah, at the time. I see. So, how many how many fire departments do you think were involved? Well, I know that the La Haye Fire Department was there, okay. and uh, and the Bridgewater Fire Department, and the Lunenburg Fire Department, okay. and uh, maybe Hebville didn't even have a fire department. I don't think they time. did. No, no, I don't think not so. likely. And so, what what burnt? Mrs. Everett told me about her husband's woodworking bu building burning out around the Acadia lands out there. So, all of that land burned out there, or well, not all of it, but uh, Mr. Heb, Mr. Irving Heb had two large, two of those large buildings. Uh, I think, in fact, there were eight of the eight large buildings, and Acadia Construction owned either four or six of them and uh, or and 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 Mr. Hebb's building burned and and uh, Mr. Everett's building burned and the Acadia buildings and La Have equipments were alongside of each other there were, I think there were four of them and they didn't burn they saved those okay um, what about um what was what was Acadia doing out there at that time? Well, they they were they were in the construction business and they were using those buildings as uh, as warehouses and uh, and uh, garages and things like that. I see. And they had been used for what before during the war? They they were built by the federal government or the War Department to build scows to take material to to take material to uh, France after the initial D-Day landing. Okay, okay, so they actually were building the scouts. <coughs> Does that be Foundation Maritime or, or Foundation Maritime, Maritime yeah, yes. That was building scouts here in Bridgewater. Yes, and they and uh, they they had perhaps six or seven hundred people working back there. Is that right? Yes. Were they all local people, pretty well? No. Okay. Well, mostly French people. Is that right? From Quebec. Is that right? Yeah, that everybody else had gone to war. Okay. Well, that's very interesting. I didn't know that. I, yeah, and then they were boarded in, in Bridgewater to, to yeah. all, all the, everybody took a couple of them. Okay. <coughs> um, <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now um, your other involvement. Your, you you were. A, were you ever a fireman, or were you just working that fire or helping that fire because you kind of got conscripted onto it, <laughs> into it? No, uh, the uh, the La Haye Fire Department came, and and uh, and uh, a neighbor of ours, uh, Mr. Jimmy Mason. Uh, told me that we'd go and work with uh, Lawrence Hillman and the La Haye Fire Department. I see. So we went back on uh, Pine Street, uh, where Gary Noss lives now, on the opposite side of the road, and there was a trickle of water in the brook there. <clears throat> and uh, 
someone brought a bulldozer and they bulldozed the brook so that the water would dam up behind and we ran the pump from there. <coughs> For goodness sakes, they just made a dam right then and there and, and dammed the water up. Dammed a little bit of water up and, and uh, the La Haye Fire Department went through the area that is now uh, a Wiley Smith subdivision putting the fire out. Okay, so that was the it area was, that they were... Yeah. And it burnt, it burnt uh, down. Do you think it burned down as far as here, to the muse where the museum stands today? Well, it was, it was uh, right behind us here, yes. At the swimming pool, yeah. or the... Yeah, that it area. didn't burn, it didn't burn on this hill here, but it burned like down in the lowland behind the, the, the dump pond. Okay. I understand. And it came down almost to opposite Meldrum's Hill. Okay. It, it, it burnt down there. Down Pine Street that And it kind of, that then then night came and, and uh, the wind died down and, and then then it was, it was uh, quelled then. Okay. But, but uh, other than that it would have just continued right to the river. Mm -hmm. And they expected it to go to the river. They kind of warned a lot of people to. Oh, there, there were houses like, uh, like there were houses on Jubilee Road here, because the Jubilee Road stopped at, at York Street or Alexander Avenue, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and from there down there were at least four houses that took all the furniture out and put it on the on the lawn, so to be ready to go, and then had that night put it back in the house. <laughs> yeah. And Mr. Mr. Meldrum brought all his furniture out of the house and brought it down to the to the road, and then they took it all the way back up the next morning. It, uh, I see. Oh, there must have been a lot of people that were very concerned. Oh, very extremely worried. concerned. Yeah, very concerned. Yeah. Okay. Um, after you went to Labrador, we got to, we got sort of off the track there a little bit, but um, when you came back from Labrador, what did you do? I opened a professional answering business in Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. Where was your office? The office was in the house at 166 Front Street, mm -hmm. and after that it was uh, on Dufferin Street. Okay, where on Dufferin Street? Uh, well, it was in, in the in the um, opposite the the super lines service station oh okay the, the drill shed okay it was uh, about Robert Finals building okay okay I see yeah um, now what activities did you take part in in town were you part of the exhibition I was yes on the exhibition commission and I was, uh, I curled, and I, and I was the cub master and scope master uh, in, Bridge, in the Bridgewater Baptist Church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What did you do on the exhibition commission? What was your, you know, were you? I was in charge of the, of the, of the uh, renting the main building. Okay. Yeah. I see. So we, we revamped the, uh, revamped the main building and, and uh, brought in a whole lot of uh, smaller exhibits. Okay. What was the main building like? Was it, you know, like I remember the main building as a skating rink. And that's, and it's the same as it was. It was okay. It's just that the outside now is covered. Okay. But it's the same building. I see. Okay. Yeah. And, um, you told me you were the first tree commissioner. What was the tree commissioner doing? We planted planted trees. Okay. In the new subdivisions. Oh, is that right? And and uh, we're responsible. And and I, so I had a committee of of uh, I formed a committee with uh, I was the I was the uh, commissioner and uh, I had Rick Lord and uh, who became a councillor. And George Lake, who was in the vocational school as a sub commissioner, so to speak. I see. And uh, and so you people decided which trees and where to put them. 
Right. Did you did you charge the did the did the homeowners pay any money towards? No. Okay. The town paid for all the trees. No, and we planted them. Yes. I see. Because in Quebec, where I lived in a subdivision, you paid something towards the tree. Everybody paid for their, you know, sort of paid for their tree. And I've often wondered how the trees. Nowadays, I think the town pays part of it, but they did have a system whereby, or they, I don't know whether they still have it, where the homeowner contributes towards the cost of the tree. Well, I think if the homeowner wanted a tree, uh, he he could uh, request one. I see. But. Uh, but the ones lining the streets and that sort of thing were all free. Well, because the problem would then be that you'd have a big space if one of the homeowners decided they didn't want one. And if you if you gave that homeowner one free, then then the other people wouldn't yeah. contribute. I see. Okay. Um, and you also told me that you participated in the Yacht Club. Can you tell me about that? Well, I was uh, in the Yacht Club before, uh, in the early 50s, and when I went away to, to Quebec, I was in the Yacht Club, so that when I came back, I, was in, I joined the Yacht Club again. <clears throat> I had a sailboat. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a uh, Blue Nose class sailboat, and... Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. And and uh, then it became that we had to move the art club because the land that we were on was just rented. Oh, is that right? And uh, so we bought uh, the area where the new yacht club or the yacht club is now, and then we had to move the building from the south side. Over to the new, yeah, sort of the south side, side and, of the cove. And, and, yes, yeah. and and uh, and I, I, uh, I was in charge along with Lori Refuse of a committee to move the Oak Club, and I got a a grant from the federal government to uh, to to put people to work and 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 to do that, and we got it. Twenty or twenty-five thousand dollar grant, and also got a grant from the Department of Natural Resources in Nova Scotia. Doctor Delory was the uh, was the uh, MLA at the time. He was the minister. Okay. And he he got us an additional ten thousand dollars, and 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 we moved the building then. And so you actually moved the building. You didn't build a new building. It was the, it was the same building, or we we uh, we dragged it across the ice, and it wouldn't come up on the ice. We had to, well, it was just like the base of the building and the sides, and and uh, we dragged it over and and uh, put it where it is now, and increased the size of it a little I bit. See. I yes, see. Yes, we made it. Uh, Probably about twenty or thirty feet. Put bathrooms in it that made it about twenty feet or so longer. I see. And put a new roof on it. Okay, I see. Yeah. Um, do you remember anything about the water carnivals? The water carnival. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Tell my, me about the water carnival. My uncle had a store uh, opposite Rayfuse Motors on King Street in the in what is now the the Harold Herding building, the, the yeah, the LaHaye furnishing La building. furnishing building. Okay, so your uncle was Mr. Barrett. Barrett. Barry. Mr. Barry. Yeah, yeah. Barrett. Barrett. And and uh, after the war, well, he had started the store in 1942, and after the war, they they uh, resurrected the the water carnival, and it ran. In 1946 until about 1951 or two, or thereabouts. Yeah, and then it, it kind of died out. And what activities went on during the water? Oh, they had log rolling. They had uh, canoe races. They had uh, uh, you know, the yachts 
the parade of the parade of the late yachts. And they had uh, princess or queen of the Lahave yacht yachts. Oh, did they? <coughs> yes. When I was going to after in '54, when I was going to go to uh, Royal Military College. Uh, they sent an application or something, and and one of the things was uh, I needed a birth certificate. Oh yeah. So I went to the. Nobody had a birth certificate. And so I went to your father's office, and he was sitting behind the desk, and with that gruff voice that he had, and and uh, he said. Uh, Yes, I can make you a birth certificate. He said I was there, and he he pulled out a piece of paper and wrote down on the piece of paper that I certify that Nate Joseph was yeah and, was born and he signed it. <coughs> did that work? Yep, it did. <coughs> yeah, gee whiz. I suppose in in the end I had to get another birth certificate, but that that yeah. was that was all yeah. that was required. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. You know, I mean that it was just a matter of writing the paper in those days. Yeah. Um, okay, we were talking about the yacht club, and uh, you and you had been a in the tree commissioner, and you also were involved in. You said something to me about being involved in the beginnings of the museum. Were you you were on the first museum commission? Is that it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think the museum museum was was uh, combined with the park, and I was on the Parks and Recreation Commission. Okay, it still that, is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and so you remember when they started talking about building here? Yeah, this this was. Uh, You said Judge, judge Owen, but there seems there seems to be another name there, another judge. Well, um, the house that George Young lived in. Uh, what was that name? The the house that who lived in? George and Sharon Young on on. Uh, oh, Thurlow. Um, no, no. Um, oh. He was a, he was a judge and he left this land, and I don't think it was Owens. Well, we can find that out. I can't. Rem I thought it was Owen, but uh, but the thing is, who was the was was Glenn Feinel involved in the in the museum at that at your in your time or? Oh yes, later on. Later on. Yeah, the museum the museum was in the, the IOF had the museum. Behind the, what is now the the Royal Bank, okay, in in that little area between, uh, well, Ma Maggie Herman had a store up there, mm -hmm. and this was next door, okay, and the museum was in there because I used we used to go down there, and they had a they had a little library there, yes, and we used to go in the the museum it, it, towards the latter part or the early part of the summer before school was out and we'd get down there uh, from school and, 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 and look at all the stuff. Yes, and look at all the things that were in there. Yeah. And that was the, I think that was the Women's Institute yeah. that... Uh, IOF. Oh, yeah. was it? Okay. Women well, it was some, some I know like, where you're talking yeah. about in that building. It was on the second floor. And where did, but but then then all, so then everything got moved over here and it was the Centennial Project that right. kind of started it. It was 67, yes. Okay, yeah. okay. So, and was John Hurdle the mayor then? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and was the building the size that it is now? Pretty well. Okay. Yeah. There was a little bit added on, but... Yeah, uh, but not much. But it was, and and uh, I guess was was uh, Glenn Feindel the first person, the first sort of curator that came over here at that time. 
I think so, yes. I can't remember because I wasn't living here then. Well, I do remember that that I was that I was doing a survey down in West La Haye, in Dublin Shore and came across a building uh, that was uh, falling down and there were an awful lot of woodworking tools in them. Oh, is that right? And I asked the people if I could have them and they said yes, public overs. And, and I brought about 20 old planes and, and uh, woodworking tools, big, I see. big long ones. And I wood. see. And, and gave them to the museum. I see. And and Glenn Final was here at that time. I see. Was the one who yeah. took them in. Um, how? What changes have you seen? What changes have you seen in Bridgewater, Naif? It's just a a massive uh, enlargement of the of the town. The the old town is probably four times as big as it is now. It's, yeah. Much, much. With yeah, larger. It's, it's grown four times. Um, can you tell me? Can you remember or tell me anything about the building of the new bridge? What I call the new bridge, <laughs> the Veterans Memorial Bridge. My uh, sister says I should call it. Mean Memorial Bridge. Yeah. Yes. It, it, in, in fact, uh, there were some buildings on the riverside north of the bridge. Mr. Meisner had a, a garage there, and uh, and and Debert O'Neill owned the Chevrolet dealership then, and and I and I uh, took a contract to tear down those buildings. And one of the buildings I tore down was uh, the Warfield House, which is in the center of the of the bridge, and that's where my brother Wilfred was born. Oh, is that right? Right. Yeah. I see. So what year was that? The, 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 do you remember the, what year the bridge was built or when the bridge was built? What was on the other side of the bridge? There, there was one house that was near it. It was, it was Telf Telfer's, I think it was. Okay. But, uh, but other than that, there was nothing on the, the other Telfer side. The Telfer store was, yes. was right there. Yes. Yeah. And that's still, that's, that house has been changed into a... That store has been changed into a house, but that was the Telfer store right. that was there. So there was. Was there anything up above it before you got to the fire to the uh, to the um, farmers uh, co-op? On the left, just as what is there now on the okay. left-hand side yeah. on the riverside. The houses. There were three houses, and on the on the other side, uh, there were just a few little houses. And the and the Ethel Cross. And the and. The, and the uh, co-op and then the F.O. Crows place. Yes. Do you remember a bottling company up there? Oh, yes. What was that? That was the 7-Up. The 7-Up, okay. Bottling company. Okay. And they, they bottled a Vangeline orange. Oh, that's right. And 7-Up and, and uh, a couple other things. Yeah. And they weren't there for... Were they always there when we were kids? and then They, they were, were always there. They okay. were one of the oldest bottling works. I see. In town. Okay, I see. What do you remember about the railroad? Oh, I remember the railroad being. I remember. Nineteen fifty-two. The there was an awful lot of snow, and they hired all kinds of men and kids to shovel the snow from the railroad. Is that right? And from the it, tracks. From the tracks, and to put it on flat cars, and then they'd take it up the river, and then you'd shovel it off the flat cars off the. Oh. <laughs> and then they'd come back and shovel it, but there, there, there was an extreme amount of snow. Okay. And and, and uh, no way of getting rid of the snow, so therefore, it had to be all shoveled. Okay. This took a week. Oh, I bet it did. Yes, to shovel the snow. Yeah. Yeah. And that that brings me to another thing. Where did you coast? Did you did you coast on the Alley Hill, or did you coast somewhere down on Jubilee Road, or you know? We used to coast on the Alley Hill, and and uh, if you could if you could get to the golf club, which they didn't like, we'd coast on the golf club a yeah. little bit. But yeah. but that was more 
for toboggans, but but yeah. uh, bobsleds on on the Alley Hill and on uh, Jubilee on Cornwallis Street. I want to show you this picture. I just had it. I had it printed, and it's taken from the golf course, looking down over High Street. It says it's looking north off off uh, off uh, the eighth and ninth holes. Well, yes, because this is the racetrack here. Yeah. Now tell me about the race. Do you know anything about the racetrack? Yes. Well, tell me about the racetrack. Well, when when in the forties, I can remember Mr. At the time of the exhibition, Mr. Sweeney would bring horses from PEI, and uh, the famous man Joe O'Brien uh, would bring his horses, and and uh, they'd uh, they'd race at the same time as the as, as the, the exhibition. exhibition. Yes. Okay. That was when they that was when the horse races took place. Yes. Okay. Because we we don't have very much information on the racetrack, and Keith Hebb gave me that picture, tiny thing, and I've just taken up. I want to go up on the golf course and get somebody to take a picture of Bridgewater today. I mean, it's not. I won't do it in the winter time. I'll do it in the summer time. But before they develop the golf course into something else, <laughs> you know, into a development, into a condo development or something. I would imagine the the uh, the old golf clubhouse is over here to the to the south of that big tree. Yeah, because isn't that that's where Joe Ashkins used to land his plane? He used to fly in Dora and Jimmy um, Dora Ashkins brother. I think it was brother came from the States and he flew a little plane and he would land on the golf course and it was somewhere around that tree mm -hmm. that he landed. I can remember seeing that seeing that plane up there and not being I didn't put the I didn't put that tree into perspective but uh, but the where would the um, the um, stables were sort of right down here where the white fence is right the over the stables would be right, down right in there. here. Yeah. And out towards the highway. Out yeah, towards out towards uh, Dufferin. Dufferin Street. Yeah. Yeah. And they right, were closest to Dufferin Street. Right, well, uh, or, right where the, where the Canadian Tire Store is now. Okay. And that would have been next to uh, Harley Spence's yes. house. Yes, yeah. The yeah. stables are right there. Yeah, okay. That's what, we've, that's what we kind of worked it out. What do you think that building is over there across the river? right there. I don't know. I wondered if it was Rafuse and Eisner's, you know, or the, or the, um... Building company, no, that's too far north. Okay. Maybe it's, uh, Harry Forkham's garage then. No, the that wasn't company. there then. It wouldn't have been there, the Texaco garage? No, the Harry Corkham's garage. Oh, oh Harry Corkham's yeah, garage. Yeah, Harry Corkham's garage. No, that's right down by the river. Came right to, down by Aberdeen Road, you know, the old Aberdeen Road, which is the Davison, you know, kind of. White Rose was on one side and Texaco was on the other side of the street as you crossed over the railroad tracks. But it's hard to tell, and it's not—it's not important. The thing—the thing is that I got this picture, and it's the only thing that we've seen of the racetrack. It—it—it it, it might have been the the the, uh, the the train station. Maybe it is. It could be that it is the train station. The, because it was gray. It gray was stone. gray stone, so therefore yeah. it probably shows up as being. Lighter than yeah. the uh, yeah. Well, Nave, is there anything else that you can think of to tell me? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I've really enjoyed this. Okay. <laughs>